as the song has just said, welcome, welcome to you this morning to Bilston um, service, whether you are on Zoom, whether you're being streamed or whether you'll be watching this at a later date. We trust that as you fellowship with us today, you will be blessed. Um, it's We've been doing this now for some time and it's has given us that chance to come together despite us not being in a physical building, but we can be virtually together. And as we've come today, we trust that the fellowship will bring blessing to you. And as the psalmist says, I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. I will recount all of your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and exult in you. I will sing praises to your name, O Most High. And on that note, let us sing together hymn number 183. The scripture reading for today is um, taken from Psalm 34. I'll read the first four verses. It says um, at the top of the chapter, it is a psalm of David when he pretended um, madness before Abimelech, who drove him away, and he departed. Psalm 34, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I saw the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. That is read from the New King James Version. And as um, we ask the Lord to um, bless us as we um, listen to those words, let us bow our heads as we um, seek um, the Lord in our prayers. 
course, I'll pray, but um, there may be others who feel the need to have their own um, prayer. So um, let's pray if we position ourselves in a comfortable position of reverence. Blessed Lord and Father, gracious Father, we are glad to be here to worship you today, to honor and exalt you. That's because you're our creator and the maker of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in it. You are awesome, Lord, and that is why we are always in amazement of um, your works when we come before you. Lord, you are our king, and the glory, and you are the king of glory, and we thank you, Lord. We thank you also for being our father, our redeemer, and our shepherd. We thank you for loving us so much that you sent your son, Jesus, to die so that we can live. We're thankful that the Holy Spirit is here also that will give us comfort and empowers us, Lord, so that we can be witnesses um, for you. We thank you for watching over us. We ask that we will praise you, Lord, for all the wondrous work that you've done and for as long as we breathe. Let us also we pray, Lord, give us strength that we will continually praise you and we continue to have our hopes in you. Today, Lord, we come before you on this Holy Sabbath day. Remember that it is the day you created and it is a day of rest and gladness. Help us that as we worship and fellowship one with another, we will rejoice in you. Help us, Lord, in our weakness. Help us in our illnesses also. Sometimes we make poor judgments and we seek your forgiveness, Lord, for the wrongs that we have done. Lord, we believe you. We believe in your goodness. We believe in your powers. We ask you to show us with your love and compassion. We ask you to continue to be our refuge, our strength, our shield. Our protector, our protector from dangers, Lord, and all the um, things that um, we experience from day to day. As we listen to your servant today, we ask that we will be blessed and may his words be acceptable to our hearts. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayers and um, if there is anything that we have failed to ask you for, we know you're a merciful Father, we know you're a merciful God. We ask you to grant your blessing unto us and help us that we may walk in your light always. I pray and ask these mercies in your name. Amen. 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 I have not got a children's story, and uh, but I was assured that one usually is given during the time of the sermon. So for those of us who might be expecting it now, rest assured, one will be given during the, um, the sermon. Our speaker today is um, Dr. Braithway, and uh, Dr. Braithway is the Ministerial Secretary and Family Life Director of the South Leeward Conference, and he lives in Antigua with his wife and two daughters. Dr. Braithway owns a doctor's ministry degree in family life and therapy and uh, it is something that he enjoys 
doing very much. He received those degrees from Andrew University, the Adventist University in America. Dr. Braithway, he loves the Lord and he knows him and he's trusting the Lord, he stirs. And he loves to make others come to know Jesus too. And therefore, it is my pleasure to welcome Dr. Braithway to our congregation, Bilston, and we trust that as he ministered with us, that it will be a blessing, not only for us, but also to everyone who are not regularly worshipping with us. So Dr. Braithwaite, welcome to Bilston, and we look forward to hearing your words. But before we hear your words, we've got this meditational song, after which Dr. Braithwaite will speak to us. Thank you very much. special music and uh, it is certainly uh, my pleasure to be with you here at Bilston uh, in uh, Wolverhampton I understand it is uh, in the West Midlands it's a pleasure to be here with you Elder Griffith uh, thank you for dialoguing with me uh, earlier in the week in preparation for today and uh, it's been a pleasure uh, just talking with you and now having the privilege of seeing you uh, virtually, albeit uh, you, you look much younger than you suggested you are. So I give God thanks for God's goodness uh, to you. Happy Sabbath, everybody. Um, it is my prayer that you are doing extremely well over there in the United Kingdom. And uh, as I am told, we are also streaming live, I believe, on YouTube. So uh, very happy Sabbath to all of our viewers on YouTube. And uh, as we celebrate the Sabbath hours and God's goodness to us, uh, bringing greetings from uh, Antigua in the Caribbean. And I uh, just want to remind you that in the Caribbean, uh, we enjoy our beautiful mangoes uh, during the summer. <laughs> 
just to whet your appetite a little bit. Had one this week. It's not the mango season, but uh, we were able to find one. So we enjoyed that beautiful, uh, sumptuous, luscious mango. Uh, I'm doing this to get you a little bit jealous. And uh, also, um, you know, we, we also celebrate uh, beautiful weather <laughs> in the 80s. I know that you're in the 40s or there about right now. Uh, so we will package some uh, sunlight, uh, Federal Express, and send it over to you. I hope you can enjoy it. <laughs> I hope you can enjoy it. Um, but it's certainly a privilege to be with you, um, uh, uh, Brother Griffith, Elder Griffith. Uh, in our conversation, I was able to share with him um, that I was actually born in the United Kingdom, uh, spent about 13 of my years there, born in East London, the Hackney area. Um, I attended the Holloway Church and also uh, was a student at the Highland House uh, School in Walthamstow and was one of the very first students who attended the then John Loughborough Secondary School uh, on the, the leadership at that time of, of Principal uh, Wilford, if you would remember him, um, very good friend of our family. Um, my father served as the first elder of Holloway for a number of years, uh, Percival Braithwaite, and uh, he passed away a few years ago at the age of 99, at the age of 99. So we just want to just wanna celebrate with you uh, another wonderful Sabbath. And um, thank you for the invitation uh, to speak uh, today. Uh, I want to thank again uh, Elder Griffith for you know just keeping me uh, on the straight and narrow in terms of of the church and just letting me know how things would run. So I really appreciate that. And also want to thank uh, I believe your pastor's name is Majidukan or Majidukan. Um, thank him for allowing us allowing me to be on this platform with you uh, today. So again, happy Sabbath, everybody. It's beautiful to see all of you who I can see on, 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 uh, on Zoom. It's good to see some faces, and I'm really happy that you have uh, actually unlocked your videos. A uh, number of times that I've spoken, people keep their videos closed, so you're not quite sure. You're just preaching, you know. <laughs> you're just preaching, and uh, you're trusting that the word is getting through. So again, want to say thank you to that. Uh, Antigua, the South Newwood Conference, of which I'm a part, uh, is made up of five islands. It's Antigua and Barbuda, uh, St. Kitts and Nevis, and also Montserrat. Um, and that's our our conference. We have about 12,000 members. Uh, the president is Dr. Carson Green. We have a secretary, Dr. Wayne Knowles. And our treasurer is, is, is Sister Krista Moore. So I bring you, bring you greetings from this part of the world. And uh, I'm sure many of you have some form of connection with the Caribbean uh, and other parts of the world as well. So we're really just happy to be here. I'm really happy to be here with you as we celebrate God's Sabbath. I trust that you've been doing well. Um, you know, during the pandemic, I know that things are pretty uh, crazy, you know, uh, there in the UK as well, been following the, the news uh, of, of, of vaccinations, of lockdowns, the entire gamut. You know, we've been having a discussion on the AstraZeneca vaccine. That's the one that I got. Um, and I know there's a big discussion about um, about vaccinations and uh, about, you know, it's, 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 it's viability. We've had huge discussions about whether the vaccination should be taken or if it should not be taken, you know, and I just encourage people to talk to God and, and make a choice, make a decision, um, you know, but by God's grace, stay healthy, uh, love your Lord. Um, you know, the real solution to this problem is not vaccination. The real solution to this problem is that we need Jesus to come um, so that we can go home and get out of this sink earth uh, where we have all of these significant challenges and problems. So, you know, that's my prayer that each of you will stay safe, you and your families, that God will bless you real good, and that by the grace of God, when Jesus comes a second time, we can have a place in his eternal kingdom. I spoke up today, um, and I, I was, I was um, I'm quite aware that we, we generally stay on the half hour mark 30 to 35 minutes so i'm going to try to get it on in in that period of time um but you folks don't have anywhere to go so you can stay with me a little longer i'm just i'm just playing uh <laughs> but um we're going to try to do it in in about half an hour um where's your gold mine where's your gold mine is a, is a sermon title or where do you place value where do you place value i'll invite you to bow your heads with me as we pray now father god we want to thank you for the blessings of today for the sabbath lord and thank you for 
the opportunity to be here with Bilston, uh, the members of the Bilston Seventh-day Adventist Church. Lord, we are thankful that all over the world, we there are people who serve you in the midst of a pandemic, Lord, have not lost hope, have not lost their faith in you, but they continue to serve you, to continue to love you, continue to minister uh, to the needs of community and to the members of the church. Gracious God, we thank you uh, for the past of this congregation and for Elder uh, Griffith, who has been leading out, and all of the leaders who are here uh, with us today. We pray for the world. We pray for the challenges of life. We pray for loved ones and ask for the power of your Holy Spirit to join with us today as we celebrate your goodness. Bless us to this end, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, just to let you know that um, my, my dear wife, Sister Shireen, and our children, we have a boy and a girl, 18-year-old boy. His name is Shamar. And uh, he, my, my daughter, uh, she's 14. Her name is uh, Shalissa. And uh, they are also, um, you know, coping through the pandemic, doing their classes through uh, uh, virtual means. Uh, we in Antigua, we still go out to work on, on in the weekdays. Our churches are um, semi-open. <laughs> We really have a limit of 25 people who can go to the church congregation. So most churches use that uh, to take care of the communication staff who will handle the virtual programs. So uh, that's exactly how we've been doing it uh, here in, in, in Antigua. And, um, you know, it's been working fairly well. It's been working fairly well. And uh, we are thanking God for what he has been doing. Where is your gold mine? That's, that's our sermon title for today. And I want to turn your attention. We used our, the passage in, in Psalm as our passage uh, for, for, for a meditation. But our sermonic passage uh, comes uh, is, is really the story of the prodigal son, which we'll look at a little later. But I want you to take the opportunity now to look at, or just to listen to uh, another powerful passage that we find in Matthew chapter 20. Verse 37, the Bible says there, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. And that's how God wants us to love him, really, church. To love him with our heart, our soul, and our mind. He wants us uh, to love him with everything that we have. In the midst of the challenges of life, uh, God wants us to love him. Um, even though you may be going through difficult circumstances, God wants you to love him. God, God has done so many things for us. He has, he has taken care of so many issues and so many matters uh, in our circumstances. I'm sure that so many of you today on this platform can testify of the goodness of God. The goodness of God. And, and I believe that, that there are many testimonies about how good God has been to you and to your family in spite of the challenges, in spite of the crises. Uh, there is a reality that I like to say this way, if you can inhale and if you can exhale, you have something to praise God about. You have something to praise God about. So where is your gold mine? Let's begin this way. God has the highest gold, I'm sorry. Gold has the highest corrosion resistance of all of the metals, and it is corroded only by a mixture of nitric and hydrochloric acid. Gold is a noble metal because it does not oxidize, it does not rust. Uh, the mentioned characteristics are enough to make a very useful and desired metal, thus a very valuable one. Gold is very valuable. We know this. It's the same thing with other precious metals. Gold is a very rare element, so it's more valuable than common elements such as iron. The other reason that gold works so well as a currency is, is chemical. Gold, as I mentioned, is one of those metals that does not rust. It does not oxidize. So gold will maintain its weight, and it will also maintain its value. That's why gold is so precious, because it doesn't lose value. It doesn't rust. It, it, it does not lose its weight. Gold is extremely valuable. Uh, 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 things that are valuable in this world are things that the world makes seem valuable. Well, let's look at diamonds, for instance. Let's look at diamonds. The, the world craves after diamonds. Somebody said diamonds are forever. And, 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 and women and, and, uh, look for beautiful diamonds. I, I, I know this because many of you, if you 
those of you who are married at least, if you look on your left hand or on that specific finger, it's very likely that you have a diamond somewhere on there. According to uh, a website known as truthfossil.com, that for centuries, diamonds have been a sign of power, of wealth and status. The stone was a rare find and therefore was, was worth a, a, a whole lot more. However, in the 1800s, 1800s, a veritable diamond trove was unearthed in Kimberley, South Africa. The newfound mine had the potential to flood the market with diamonds and bring down the cost for the precious stone. Uh, to prevent too many diamonds from hitting the market, the Bears, a company, quickly intervened, bought up the mine, and maintained tight control over the global diamond supply. This gave the illusion, the illusion, that diamonds were exceedingly rare. In turn, the seemingly limited supply inflated the cost of diamonds. Those of you who do a little bit of economics would understand the whole uh, uh, idea of, 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 of supply and demand, so they restricted supply uh, so that demand would rise and, and, and artificially inflate the cost of diamonds. Throughout the 19th century, the Bays effectively maintained a monopoly on the global gold or the global, global diamond mines. Um, uh, uh, Actually, the cartel would stockpile diamonds, a limit supply, uh, uh, and drive up the demand and the cost. Uh, the Bays also began an aggressive marketing campaign, an, an aggressive marketing campaign to promote diamond engagement rings. Again, look at your finger, look at your finger. Uh, the brand pushed out the long-standing traditional ruby and sapphire engagement and ring and replaced it with the over overwhelming demand for diamond rings. And, and many of you, if you would uh, check your, your parents, uh, you would realize that their rings generally were not diamond. Uh, their rings were, were rubies or sapphires that they were colored stones that, that marked that tremendous event of a marriage. It was not so much diamonds, but, but diamonds, diamonds have, have been marketed to the world to suggest that this is the way uh, to go. The fever pitch demand coupled with the debates controlled and limited release uh, of that diamonds increased the overall cost of diamonds, even though, even though, listen to this now. Now, there is actually an abundance of diamonds. Someone, someone is controlling it to make it appear as though diamonds are limited. As I mentioned before, somebody said that diamonds are forever. But before you admonish yourself or, or chastise yourself for being duped by clever marketing propaganda, understand that diamonds have long been considered a valuable stone. Uh, it's a strong stone. Ancient Greeks, Greeks revered, revered, revered the indestructible stone and believed it to have mystical powers. For centuries, diamonds have been worn by royalty and noblemen as a status symbol, and diamond engagement rings have been traced all the way back to 1477 when the Austrian Archduke Maximilian uh, uh, proposed to marry of Burgundy with a diamond ring. And so today, the silver is not a new phenomenon. By any means, diamonds are undeniably dazzling, brilliant, and mesmerizing. They are beautiful and they are worthy of awe. But, but, but what I want you to understand today is that diamonds, uh, the valuableness or the valuable nature of diamonds has been almost falsely created by a marketing machine. Let's talk a little bit about how our minds work. I want our young people to listen to this today, psychology.com, an article that was written on conscious branding. Uh, follow me now and, and, and follow me young people as well, those of you who are on the platforms. Our minds work by associating sensory experience to feelings. Our minds work by associating sensory fee, uh, uh, experiences to feelings. Let me explain this a little more. We learn quickly not to touch a hot stove again 
uh, because the feeling of pain, the feeling of pain becomes linked to the concept of a stove. So a negative feeling uh, we do not soon forget. When you touch a hot stove, there is a sensory experience of heat that creates uh, some discomfort. And our minds does our mind will never forget that. But most of our memories become stored. Most of our sensory memories become stored. Uh, they become stored below our awareness at a level that is just a little bit below our our, 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 our conscious levels or it's stored in our unconscious minds. We simply have no accurate recollection of how these neural connections were formed, how we came about with these associations uh, 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 of heat and pain uh, just by experience, but, but they're stored just below the conscious, in the subconscious. Uh, this can help us from getting blown again because there is something that tells us and reminds us that if we touch a hot stove, if we touch fire, it's going to create a negative experience for us as a result sometimes things become very important. <laughs> I want you to follow me a little bit here now. Sometimes, uh, church, uh, brethren, those of you who are listening to us, things become uh, 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 very important. This whole notion of, of neural connections can sometimes, as it were, backfire on us. And so we begin to make connections and links to things, and we begin to create importance uh, for things like how the marketing machine makes us think that diamonds are the most important important thing for a woman to have when she's getting married, uh, sometimes uh, these links create some challenges for us. As a result, as I mentioned, sometimes things become very important to us or make, we make certain decisions even without really knowing why we make that particular decision. Take for instance, the dual purchase of toothpaste and mouthwash. Follow me, church. Follow me. I'm going somewhere. The dual purpose of toothpaste and mouthwash. Why would anyone brush with toothpaste clinically proven to whiten teeth and then rinse with a brightly colored green mouthwash containing blue dye number one and yellow dye number five? Try as you might, you would be hard-pressed to find a brand of mouthwash that doesn't contain artificial dyes in shades that would be most unflattering to our teeth. We take the time to brush our teeth, to whiten our teeth with, with, with toothpaste, uh, chemically designed to whiten our teeth, and then we use a, a mouthwash that is yellow or green in color with dye in it, and we rip our mouths out, and we come out feeling sparkly clean. But, 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 but through past repetition of other colored products, our unconscious minds have learned to associate the color green and blue with feeling clean, fresh, healthy, and minty. So, so much so that now every time we see those colors, green and blue, it comes with a powerful emotional response. Overriding any concerns about why we are buying whitening toothpaste in the first place, we just believe unconsciously that rinsing with mouthwash, which is blue, will help to freshen our breath, help to make us our mouths healthier. We are learning without even knowing. Part of the reason this happens is because the brain's emotional systems can function independently from the cortex, the seat of consciousness, the decision-making decision -making part of our brain. Therefore, memories and responses, response repertoires can be formed without us ever knowing. It's like no one was home when we were living and learning. It's like things are taking place or are taking place that we're not even quite so sure about, but we are learning whether we like it or not, church. You are learning, young people, whether you like it or not, you are learning. And so as consumers, 
This experience can both negatively and positively predispose us to brand-based unconscious associations through ads and slogans and mascots and design elements and, and brand properties. People may not really know why they love the brand that they love. Why do you love uh, 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 buying a Gap? Or why do you love uh, buying uh, an Apple Watch? Why do you prefer to own a, a, a Dell computer? Why, why do you prefer a Volkswagen car? Why do you prefer a Mercedes Benz? Why, why do you prefer a BMW? Uh, why do you prefer a, a particular brand from Primark? Why do you prefer these things? Uh, uh, there is a love that is created, a desire that is created without you even knowing it. Uh, the wise man Solomon said in, 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 in Proverbs chapter four and verse 23, he said, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Uh, what I want you to understand here today, church, that we need to guard the, the avenues of our souls. Proverbs 4.23 from the Living Bible Translation says, Above all else, guard your affections, for they influence everything else in your life. Uh, what am I here saying? What am I here saying? Uh, uh, let me say it as Ellen White says it. She says, guard God well the avenues of your soul. God well the avenues of your soul. Church, what I want you to appreciate today is that the internet and 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 the 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 the, the uh, cable television industry and the news media and the advertising industry, all of these things are aimed at causing us to develop desires for things that are worldly, are aimed at causing us to develop things that will, uh, ideas and, and practices that will take us away from God. What I'm here suggesting to us today is, church, we have to be careful about the things that we listen to, the things that we see, and the things that we, that we hear. Uh, there was a little song, be careful little eyes what you see, be careful little ears what you hear, uh, 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 for there's a father up above looking down in tender love. What I want you to appreciate as we look and as we consider this topic today, where is your gold mine? Uh, I want you to understand that, that, that the things that you uh, uh, will see as valuable in your life will be determined by what you are allowed to enter your psyche. So as we, as we speak today, I want you to turn your attention to Luke chapter 15, 11 through the 32. Luke chapter 15, verses 11 through the 32. And this is the story of the prodigal son as I shared with you a little earlier. Here is where we are going to make the connection. Where is your gold mine? I don't know what marketing this young man was exposed to, maybe on, on the internet or, or on WhatsApp or on Facebook. Uh, 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 whatever it was that influenced him, this young man decided that he wanted to leave home for what he considered to be a better life. Uh, Bible commentators suggest that this story is an unprecedented story. They also suggest that in an, in an amazingly uh, 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 unusual fashion, this, this young man, uh, in asking for his inheritance and, and, and in asking to leave home, was really asking that his father would die. Uh, the original audience of, of Jesus would have been really losing their minds because, because for a son to do such a terrible thing would have really been worthy of death. Another aspect of this amazing story is that the, the pig herding uh, uh, scenario really as an unusual scenario probably should have never happened. And, and the prodigal was not so repentant when he returned home, really. He was really uh, dealing with his, his need for food. That's why he returned home. But, but out of the story, we can glean some powerful messages. The young man was home. He was influenced by something and he wanted to leave him with his inheritance to go and enjoy life. The son believes that receiving his inheritance from the father represents what was valuable. That's the term, sermon title. Where is your gold mine? Of? What is valuable? He valuable, I'm sorry. He believed that, that leaving home 
and taken his inheritance was valuable. That's what he believed. He believed that leaving home with, 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 with his inheritance and going into a far country would provide him with an avenue to his gold mine. It wasn't so much a challenge that he was leaving home, but leaving home also indicated that he was leaving the God of his father. There are things in, that, in this world that cause us to lose our connection with God. There are things that, that, that entice us. There are things that draw us away from God. This young man was leaving home. Too many people leave home and leave Jesus in an attempt to find their goal mind and end up with absolutely nothing. Uh, in, in the Caribbean, I don't know if you know the game Wari, but in the Caribbean we say when you play Wari with God, you will end up with no seed, meaning that you will end up with nothing. When you play with God, you, you end up losing out because, because uh, serving God is the best thing that we can do. I don't know what marketing uh, this young man was exposed to, as I mentioned before. What movie, what commercials, what movies, what commercials, or, 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 or just because he, we, we learned that often marketing can create meaning when there is no meaning, or, or, or make us want something that we have absolutely no need for. I can imagine if many of you would look around your homes today, you would see all kinds of things that you have bought that you really no longer use. You just have them on a shelf somewhere, in a cupboard somewhere, gathering dust, the marketing machines have caused you to buy all kinds of gadgets, all kinds of little uh, uh, things that you place all over your house that you no longer have need for and you won't throw them out because you paid money for them but, but that is what marketing does and that is what has happened to this young man, he has left home gone into a far country because he believed that, that, that what he was going after was so valuable Hence, in this story, the inheritance. The inheritance is a metaphor for the things that people believe are valuable. And what are some of the things that we believe are valuable, church? What are some of the things that we believe are valuable in this world? We believe that lots of money is valuable. We believe that real estate and, and, and for the young people, music, uh, listening to Nicki Minaj and the Beyonce's and the Savages and the Post Malone's and the DJ Khaled and the, and the Logic and the Drake, we believe that these things are valuable. We believe in expensive toys, cars, and, and boats, and motorcycles. Some of us believe that certain relationships are valuable, or, or, or a certain job, or partying, uh, 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 being made up of the latest fashions, and, and buying the most, most, most fashionable clothing. Some of us believe that these are the most valuable things in life. People are go going after these things at the expense of many other things that are important, such as family and our relationship with God. Uh, listen carefully, brethren. The son left, the prodigal son left where he was in order to seek for the very thing that he had. Uh, let me say that again. The prodigal son left where he was in order to seek the very thing that he already had. Gopal Daz says, whether you drive a Volkswagen or you drive a Bentley, the road remains the same, wasn't it? Whether you speak on a Samsung or an iPhone 12, whoever you're calling remains the same. Isn't that true? Whether you fly economy or business class or first class, the destination remains the same. Whether you're wearing a simple fast track Fitbit watch or an Omega or a Rolex watch, uh, 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 the time remains the same. It's quite amazing how we work ourselves up into uh, uh, so much with increasing the standard of our living that we forget to increase the standard of our lives. There's nothing wrong with an Omega watch. There's nothing wrong with a Bentley car. God bless you with that. If you have it, drive it, wear it, no problem. But in trying to enhance and increase and improve the standard of your living, please remember not to compromise the standard of your life. 
It's not the standard of your living that makes you happy. It's the standard of your life that makes you happy. And very often we forget to give attention to those things that can truly make us happy. The things that I'm talking about, they have what we call utility value, not happiness value. Utility value, you can do things with them, but they don't make you happy. Traveling business class or first class class is no problem. Drive a Bentley or Royal Rolex, no problem. But in doing so, never ever compromise on those principles, principles that improve the standard of your life. Some people are so poor. Some people are so poor that all they have is money. Let me say that again. Some people are so poor that all they have is money. All they have are things. All they have are cars and, and big homes. And, 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 and in our community, we pride ourselves in, in some of the, the, the things that we purchase. But, 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 but that can be considered a poverty-stricken life. If all you have are things, if all you have is money, you are the poorest person in the entire world because there is more to life than things. There's more to life the money, uh, uh, there's more to life than what we can buy or what we can own. So many of us spend so much time trying to acquire the things of life and, and, and giving away our, our relationship with God for things. And, and, and even during difficult moments, oftentimes we, we fail to connect with God because we believe that there's something out there that may be more valuable. We can all uh, tell people who have left God's church and have, have left community have left the friendship because they wanted to enjoy other things. But I am here to declare today that the most important thing that we can ever have is a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. If you really want to know how rich you are, shed a tear and see how many hands will come to, to wipe that tear from, from your eye. Our happiness and our increased standard of life is not the thing that, 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 that we really need. We need to really understand that what's most important is, is relationships and particularly a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And friends of mine, this young man left what he had, a relationship with his family and a relationship with God to go after the things of this world. And, and some people in, in this pandemic experience, I have listened to some people who uh, have suggested that, that this pandemic is, is more than they can manage. It's like the straw that broke the camel's back for them. They are under the, the, the guise, they suggest, of happiness, but they're not truly happy because they could not have gone off after the things of, of this world, they, 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 they felt as though they were being kept back, and now that the pandemic has struck, they have nothing to hold on to because, because they want to go after the things of life, but the things of life have now failed them. When you are let down and locked in, it, it, it really causes you to have to think about what's really meaningful in life. You can have beautiful things. You have nobody to invite to your home to see them. You can have a beautiful car, but you have nowhere to go because the whole world is unlocked down you you can enjoy and, and 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 have all of these lovely things but 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 you begin to understand that in the context of living all of these things can be taken away from you in a moment in the twinkling of an eye and and, and what is left is only the relationship that you have with loved ones and the relationship that you have with the lord jesus christ so many families have been torn apart by the brokenness and and, and desire to gain things so many children have been left fatherless and mother so many husbands have been left without a wife, so many wives without a husband because people have have been chasing after the things of this world, chasing after diamonds, chasing after gold, chasing after uh, big flat screen TVs, chasing after uh, beautiful cars, chasing after even a good college education, which is a good thing, but can sometimes take away the valuable things that we need in life. So many people uh, have lost the relationship with their children because they always have to go to work to make the extra dollar, to make the extra penny, to make the extra pound so that they can buy something else. Uh, I, 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 I want you to understand today, church, that, that our gold mind is not found in things. Things of value are not found in the things of the world. But what is critical is a relationship with Jesus Christ. That's where we can find value. So I'll leave you today with this story. 
The Acres of Diamond story, a true one, is told of an African farmer who heard tales about other farmers who had made millions by discovering diamond mines. Those tales so excited the farmer that he could hardly wait to sell his farm and to go prospecting for diamonds himself. He sold the farm and spent the rest of his life wandering the African continent, searching unsuccessfully for the gleaming gems that brought such high prices on the markets of the world. Finally, worn out and in a fit of despondency, he threw himself into a river and drowned. Meanwhile, the man who had bought his farm happened to be crossing the small stream, the small stream on the property one day when suddenly there was a bright flash of blue and red light uh, from the stream's bottom. He bent down and picked up a stone. Uh, it was a good sized stone and admiring it, he brought it home and put it on his fireplace mantelpiece as an interesting curiosity. Several weeks later, a visitor picked up the stone, looked curiously at it, lifted, hefted it in his hand, uh, and nearly fainted. He asked the farmer if he knew what he had found. When the farmer said no, that he thought it was just a piece of crystal, the visitor told him he had found one of the largest diamonds ever discovered. The farmer had trouble believing that he, uh, he told the man that his creek, <laughs> listen to this, his creek was full of such stones, not all as large as the one on the mantle, but sprinkled generously throughout the entire creek's bottom were these beautiful stones. The farm, the first farmer had sold, <laughs> the farm, the first farmer had sold so that he might find a diamond mine turned out to be one of the most productive diamond mines on the entire African continent. The first farmer had owned free and clear acres of diamonds, but he had sold them for practically nothing in order to look for them somewhere else. The moral is clear. If the first farmer had only taken the time to study and prepare himself to learn what diamonds look like in the rough state to thoroughly explore the property he had before looking elsewhere, all of his wild, wildest dreams would have come true. Before you go running off, church, young people, before you go running off to what you think are greener pastures, make sure that your own is not just as green or even greener than the pastures of somebody else. It has been said, that if the other person's pasture appears to be greener than ours, it is quite possible that the other person's pasture is getting better care. Take care of your spiritual life. Take care of your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ because if you do not understand what God is doing for you, you will be tempted to run looking for the very thing that you already have. You will be tempted to give up your acres of diamond for nothing and to go looking and maybe when you're looking you might die looking when you had it in your very grasp but I'm thankful church today as we close that even though we mess up at times even though we are looking for gold mines and things of value in the wrong places. Even though like the prodigal son, we would ask for our inheritance and go into a far country and church, don't think that this prodigal son is so different from us. We think because we're in the church and we're serving in the church that we're okay. And there's another side to the prodigal son story about the boy that stayed at home who was the prodigal at home. Some of us, we are in church, but we are just as drawn away from God as those who are not in church. We can be looking in the wrong places even while we are at church, in church, involved in church. Sometimes we still do not have our connection with Jesus Christ in the way that it ought to be. But I'm thankful today that in spite of our brokenness, God still comes looking after us. And so it is that this prodigal son recognized his, the error of his ways and 
One day he decided, he said, you know what? Uh, I would be better in my father's house as a servant than in this food. Let me go home. Let me go home. And the beauty of this story is that this young man's father had always been looking out for his return. God is always looking out for us to come back home. Somebody say amen out here. God is always looking for us to come back home. As we close, for an elderly man to run in his culture was extremely unusual and very humiliating. Aristotle writes simply that great men never run in public. <laughs> Big man never run in public. You hardly see an adult man, maybe the age of Brother Griffith. Hardly see a man like you running. Unless you're exercising. Yet the father runs, and not just because he is filled with compassion. In that culture, a Jewish son who lost his inheritance among Gentiles would have been subject to a ceremony on his return to the village called the Kezaza in which the villagers would have broken large pots at his feet and yelled at him uh, uh, that was to sh show their displeasure. They would have cut him off from the society. And so when the father runs, it's at least partly because he wants to reach his son before the rest of the village can embarrass him. Church, I'm thankful today that when we come back home to Jesus, Jesus does everything to prevent us from being embarrassed. Like this father who ran to his son before the villagers could see him, before they could embarrass him, before they could say negative things about him, the father ran for him and grabbed him and took him home and threw a party for him. Oh, church, even though we mess up at times, even though we, we, we are looking in the wrong places for what's valuable, even though we are looking in the wrong places for, for our gold mines, I want you to know that our gold mine is in Jesus, and once we are ready to come back to him, he's always open, standing with open arms to receive us back. He wants us back. He runs to us. He grabs us. He throws a party for us. And it's not just those who have left the church who need to come back to Jesus. There are lots of people in church who need to confess the error of their ways, of our ways, and, and come back to Jesus in a way that would cause us to really have established a place in his kingdom. Today, church at Bilston, my prayer is that we will understand that our gold mine, the things of value, are not found in the things of this world, not in the things that we can acquire. But our gold mine is found in Jesus. Somebody say amen. Our gold mine is found in Jesus. Somebody say hallelujah. Won't somebody say hallelujah out there. Hallelujah. Our gold mine is found in our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And even though you may have messed up, Jesus is waiting with open arms, open arms to receive you back. Or is there somebody today who wants to say, Lord Jesus, just help me, just help me, just help me. Help me, Lord, to be closer drawn to you. Help me not to be distracted by the advertising of this world. Help me, Lord, not to be distracted by the glittery things of this world. Help me, Lord, not to lose my connection with you because I can be prodigal right here in the church. Help me to understand the error of my ways. Help me, Lord, to, to overcome my, my idiosyncrasies, that, that habit of anger that I have deep down in my soul, that, that arrogance that I possess. Lord, help me, Jesus. Lord, that, that narcissistic personality that I possess, Lord, help me. That unforgiving spirit, Lord, help me. In the midst of, 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 of all the things that I'm, I'm proposing in relationship to my Christianity, Lord, you know that on the outside I might look one way, but on the inside I'm struggling with issues. Ah, will you present those issues to Jesus today? Uh, now we are wearing masks. <laughs> it's amazing because all around the world, long before we were wearing physical masks, 
people were wearing emotional masks, hiding their emotions, hiding what's going on deep down inside of them. But with Jesus in the vessel, we can smile at the storm. We can put everything in the hands of Jesus. We can ask Jesus to take care of our brokenness, of our hurt. Some of us are bringing hurt from our homes of origin. We are bringing hurt from, from how, our, how we were uh, uh, treated as children. Some of us are bringing hurt from the brokenness of our own homes and from our family brokenness. Some of us are bringing hurt from, from situations with our husbands and our spouses. We, we have all kinds of hurt, but I want you to know that Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. He can do something for you today. And so today as we close, where is your gold mine today? By the grace of God, my gold mine is found in the man Christ Jesus. Is that the same with you today? If you just want to say, Jesus, I want you to keep it clear to me that my gold mine is in you. Will you just bow your heads with me as we pray? Father, we thank you for the Bilston congregation. We thank you, Lord, that, that we can put our trust in you. We thank you, God, that you have already given us everything that we need to be successful in our Christian walk. Lord, help us never to lose sight like the prodigal son lost sight where he went into a far country. Uh, 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 he was tempted and, and encouraged by the advertising of the world, Lord, that things outside are better than things on the inside. Lord, he was... <coughs> sorry. Lord, he was, he was overcome by what the world had to offer. But today, gracious Father, today, gracious Father, help us to stay focused on Jesus Christ. Help us, Lord, to understand that in you we have a gold mine. We have everything that we need. We have everything that is valuable in you, Jesus. As folks bow their heads today, may somebody... Recognize their need to return to Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the things that we can glean from the word of God. And may our lives today never be the same because we have found our gold mine in Jesus. Thank you, God, for hearing our prayer as we press on the upward way, gaining new heights every day. May our hearts onward bound and may we be planted on higher ground is our prayer. In Jesus' name, let everyone say amen and amen. God bless you, amen. everybody. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Rayford, for your sermon and your message. And the two things that we gathered from it is, uh, one, for the young people, that the things of this world will not give you satisfaction nor fulfillment. And for us adults, that we should learn to trust in God and not to chase after the things of this world. So we thank you very much for that message that you have given to us today. And we pray that as you continue to work for the Lord, that he will use you to bring his message across, not just in Antigua, the Caribbean, but everywhere that you may go and uh, we ask us to continue to bless you and your family thank you very much pastor we appreciate you taking the time you. we're not a bit early for you in the morning that's fine <laughs> <laughs> but I, that's all right. admit, I must admit the timing of the morning did not reduce your enthusiasm <laughs> No, sir. <laughs> energetic as you normally would do, be. So, thank you very much. Amen. Is of comfort Amen. And hope to all of us. God all bless right? you. God bless you. God bless you all richly. May God continue to prosper you and bless you as you remember that your gold mine is found in Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. And for Amen. that, we're going to close our service with the use of hymn 625. Our next hymn is 625 Higher Ground.
Father, God of love, we are thankful for the gift of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary, his blood that was shed so that we could have the wonderful hope of eternal life. Through his stripes, we are healed. His blood covers us, his righteousness he has given to us. Today, Lord, we present our lives to you, each person present here. We understand, God, that sometimes through the issues of life, through the temptations that are thrown at us, we often make mistakes and turn away from the path that you have shared with us. Oftentimes, Lord, we are distracted by the things of this world. But help us today to ever remember that we can find our gold mine in Jesus. And so to the church at Bilston, I declare, be strong and be courageous. Do not be afraid and neither be terrified for the Lord our God, the same God who has provided us with this gift of eternal life will be with us wherever we may go. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, let all God's children say, amen and amen. amen.